Hello friends, uh, this is Marty. I'm in the back of, uh, of the new Ram Pro Master that we were just finished building out. We call this the garage, it's basically the trunk. Uh, we're, I'm up under where our fixed platform bed is right now. Uh, and I'm gonna show you guys the electrical system. So, this is just a, a protective wall door that I put up to protect uh, the power system. Same here with this little door so that if we throw stuff in the back of the van and it starts banging around, it's not gonna hit the terminal batteries or anything like that. Uh, my buddy, Alex from Terra X, uh, is sort of the mastermind behind this electrical system. I like to say that I could have done it without him, but it would have taken about five times as long and it would have been about a tenth as good. So, just gonna strap this guy up right here and I can give you a little tour. So we have 400 watts of solar power on top, uh, four 100 watt Renogy panels that are mounted on top of a topper manufacturing rack. And um, so the, the cables from the solar panels come down, sort of <laughs> they snake through the van and end up right here. This is the positive one right here with a 30 amp breaker on it. And the negative one, they both go into the charge controller, which uh, sends as much power as the batteries want. Um, coming out here into this bus bar and then over there we've got 200 amp hours, two 100 amp hour batteries from Relyon, uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. And this guy is new to the build uh, from last time. We had solar and a Renogy Rover charge controller in the last van, but what we didn't have was any system that connected with the alternator up front. This uh, Orion is a new product by Victron. Uh, which is a European, a fantastic European electronics company. Uh, I went with Renogy and some of the other areas to sort of try to save money. Uh, but we got one of the first one of these, I believe, in San Diego. And basically what it is, it's a 30 amp battery to battery charger. So when you crank up the van and that pulse of power starts the van, as soon as the starter battery gets up back up to the voltage that it wants to be at, the battery to battery charger will start sending power, the power from the alternator, back through this guy at up to 30 amps and into these, these batteries. The alternator power is a huge upgrade from our last van, and so is going with 200 amp hours of lithium. We had 200 amp hours of glass mat AGM batteries last time. Uh, you can't draw those down below 50% without damaging them, and you can basically use almost the entire uh, capacity of a lithium battery without damaging it and so we basically essentially have twice as much power in this van but the other thing about the lithium is that it charges a lot faster it'll get to 80 or 90 percent that's my understanding anyway is it'll get to 80 or 90 percent super quickly and so they just they fill up faster even if you have the same amount of power but we don't we have an extra 100 watts from our last van our last van had 300 watts of Renogy solar on top now we have 400 and when we do drive it we're getting power from the alternator, but we actually haven't driven the van more than about six feet in the last week and a half, and we're constantly topped off. We're in Southern California with great sun, and it hasn't been raining that much, but these, I'm super impressed with our electrical system. So, moving along, um, one of the things that Alex did that I hadn't seen done before that I think is really brilliant is that he's put fuses on the bus bar here to go out to everything. So basically, what you've got is uh, the positive line coming out of the rover comes to here. Uh, that's feeding power from the solar, uh, monitored, obviously, controlled by the charge controller, to the batteries. And then this guy right here actually is hooked up to our DC fuse bank. I just have the typical 12-slot uh, 12, 12 uh, DC fuse bank from Blue Sea Systems. They make great stuff, and it's sort of what most everybody I know goes with had one in the last van, it's flawless, it works super duper well. Um, and then, uh, if we're moving back this way, on my positive bus bar bank, uh, we have the 3000 watt Renogy uh, inverter that uh, allows us to invert direct current to alternating current so we can have AC power and run appliances like you would plug into your 120 volt uh, outlets at home. We had a 1000 watt inverter last time and my kettle was 900 watts and so it was a little freaked out uh, when we when we were pushing the, the top of the ceiling of the inverter last time. Getting an inverter that's three times as large has allowed us to get a larger Instant Pot, an air frying lid for our Instant Pot, 
and we have an induction cooktop. It really, it really turns me on to be able to run essentially my entire kitchen now off of renewable electricity, which is super duper fun. So this is, this is the AC breaker. Uh, we have three sets of two AC outlets each, but we're only on two breakers because we daisy chained uh, two of them that are both on the driver's side. Um, we just basically, what you do is you hardwire the 12-3 triplex uh, under the bottom here, and then um, you run to the back of this guy, and then back out to the AC outlets. That's another Blue Sea Systems product. And so we only use two of the breakers. We've still got one open, but we've, we've got so many outlets and ports and stuff up front that I get, don't really anticipate ever needing to use that guy, unless maybe we put an AC outlet back here someday. And then finally, uh, on this end here is where the power is coming in from the from the Orion, um, and it's just grounded. It actually only has one cable running from the front to the back, uh, because it's direct current. Technically, all you need is the the hot line, and so we've got that coming back. And everything is on switches. We've got this breaker here. Um, this is <laughs> one of the tricks here, uh, and you'll know this if you've done an electrical system before. You need to be super duper careful because you can set something on fire. Uh, with a poorly managed electrical system. And we've got switches, we've got a switch here uh, that'll turn the entire battery system off. This switch will stop flow from the Orion and this guy will stop energy from coming from the, from the solar panels into the charge controller. It's really important if you're gonna shut this system down to do it in the right order because what you don't want is a whole bunch of power coming into your charge controller and your charge controller has nowhere to put the power. So switching this switch first would be a bad idea. If we're gonna turn this system off, basically what I'll do is turn off the solar and then the Orion and then the uh, whole battery system. And I could just hear my fridge go off just now. Um, and then basically we would just like turn it back on, crank it back up in the opposite order. And I, when, I, when I do that, I can see that I'm coming back online here. I can still see my voltage on my batteries and I can see that I'm not getting any power though the charge controller thinks that it's nighttime right now because I haven't turned this breaker back on this is the real essential one that you got to turn off uh, off first and on last and in a second we'll start seeing some hopefully seeing some power yeah it's saying it's daylight now um, and one of the great things about both of these two gadgets, like the, the battery to battery charger and the actual charge controller, is that both of them are on Bluetooth. So uh, at least for the first several weeks that this was up and running, and still to a certain degree, I am obsessively on this app just to make sure that the system's running correctly and that it's healthy. Because, you know, the thing about building Mediocre cabinets is, if you build medi mediocre cabinets, you have mediocre cabinets. If you build the electrical system wrong, you can burn the van down. So it's really important to, uh, to do everything very carefully when it comes to electrical. And that's one of the reasons that I was so thankful that, that I had Alex helping me. Because um, if you've seen any footage of the electrical system in the Metris, which works perfectly well, it's not as high tech and, and bells and whistlesy as this one, uh, it works perfectly well, but it is a rat's nest of cables. And uh, thanks to my meticulous German buddy, I'm all super organized. Everything's even labeled. I know, I know which fuse goes to which appliance. I guess I could tell you some things about what are what we're powering in here. I mentioned the kitchen, which is sort of the the biggest draw. We've got the induction cooktop, which I believe is an 1800 watt max uh, pull. The air frying lid for the instant pot is I want to say a thousand watts and then the instant pot when it's on saute function which is I believe its highest draw function is about 15 or 1800 watts as well so they're all pretty well below the below the uh, ceiling of the 3000 watt inverter apparently this guy will uh, handle a surge up to 6000 watts but we only run one of those three appliances at a time so we've got six AC outlets. We have eight USB outlets. We have um, eight LED recessed ceiling lights that are on two separate dimmers, one for the living space and one for the bedroom. 
We have a switch for our inverter, which is super cool because the switch on this guy is way up under here. So it's cool that we have a wall mounted switch where we can turn our inver inverter on and off. If we did get into a situation where we were low on power for some reason, maybe parked in a shady city or staying in the woods and not driving the, the van much, you do want to turn the inverter off when you're trying to conserve power because it, it eats power even when you're not putting a load on it, meaning using an appliance with it. It was 65 liter Dometic college fridge style thing, like a truck fridge that would go in a, in a, uh, in an 18 wheeler and a very small amarine water bilge pump for our water. And so <clears throat> that's basically our electrical system. For the last, uh, year and a half, I've been using my magic bullet, the little guy to, um, pulverize my coffee beans. And we recently got a hand-me-down gift. Uh, Colette's dad and stepmom had an extra Nutribullet and so they gave us that and one of the awesome things about huge upgrades about our new Dometic fridge is that it's got a little freezer compartment that's actually a lot larger than it looks and so we're having smoothies now. Colette can make two smoothies at once in the Nutribullet which is super awesome. Um, so yeah I think the the Magic Bullet's 250, 250 watts so I would imagine that the Nutribullet's probably only 500, 4 or 500. We can look at the package and see. So that's our, uh, that's our electrical system. And thanks to these little walls and doors and stuff that I've built to protect it, we can throw a bicycle and all that sort of stuff up in here um, when we're driving around. So one of, the, one of the most, unless you're an electrician, uh, one of the most unfamiliar and challenging things to do when you're planning for a van build is to determine what you need in terms of an electrical system. Um, basically, the cheapest way to get power into an auxiliary battery back here is a battery to battery charger. Um, I was really scared on my first build to put one of these guys in because I didn't want to damage the machine that is the van. Um, and so having two completely separate, separated systems made me feel a lot more comfortable. Uh, having built uh, one van before and then having a good friend who's knows a lot more about electrical than I do help me with this van um, I decided to go for uh, getting some power off of the alternator so basically what you have to do is you know there are these variables there's cost uh, there's what you want to run how much you power you actually want to be able to expend or consume and uh, and the, you know, and then there's price. One of the things that we did this time that I wish I had done last time uh, that I highly recommend doing is going with lithium. Uh, lithium batteries last longer. They're more resilient. Uh, you can use more of the power and 100 amp hours of lithium, which is roughly equivalent to 200 amp hours of glass mat. A 200 amp hour glass mat battery weighs 130 pounds and a 100 amp hour lithium battery weighs 30 or 35 pounds. And so despite the fact that we have twice as much power in this van as the last one, we're at about half of the weight that, in terms of battery weight that we had last time. Um, and then, you know, Victron has sort of got the reputation of being the company that makes the nicest stuff. Uh, and I fully buy that. Everything they have has a Bluetooth module built into it so that you can constantly monitor what's going on. That's something that I'm really uh, into doing. Um, and so, uh, this thing just became available and uh, Jenny and Alex were really excited about checking it out and so I, I bought one. Um, I decided to cut the corner on some of the Victron stuff. For example, for their inverter, they don't make, I don't believe they make actual just simple inverters. They make inverter chargers, which really are only needed if you're going to be plugging in a shore power system so that you can plug into something else. I knew that I didn't want a shore power system. I wanted my van to be completely off the grid. Uh, and for stealth purposes, I wasn't going to put a plug on the side of the van. This Renogy uh, inverter, I think it was only like 350 bucks. And a 3000 watt inverter charger from Victron is like, I think $1,200 or something like that. So I went with Renogy where I thought that I could get away with it. Like I said, I had a 40 uh, amp rover charge controller and a uh, Renogy kit that it came in with 300 watts last time and so I decided to do just the same thing 
this time, but upgrade to a little bit larger system with 400 watts. Um, so, why did I choose for 200 amp hours um, and the 3000 watts? To be perfectly honest, uh, you can charge a drone battery and a camera battery off of a very small inverter. I honestly, maybe it's a little embarrassing, but I sized our electrical system specifically so that we could have an electrical uh, kitchen that ran off of renewable energy. And I basically, I looked at what the appliances that I wanted in the kitchen, I looked at what their power consumption was, and then I just made my ceiling a good bit higher than that so that I knew that I would be good. And uh, I also really seriously considered getting 400 amp hours of lithium. They're very expensive. And uh, one of the cool things is you can run them in parallel and add to them as long as you get the exact same battery. You have to put the batteries in parallel together and they have to be the exact same model of battery. Um, and so I decided to go with Rely On because they're a, a very well liked brand and I know that I'll be able to get my hands on more of these batteries. And so what we did for cost purposes is we just put 200 amp hours in at the beginning uh, and decided to run the system for a little while with 200 amp hours, constantly monitoring, borderline obsessively. And I'm glad that we decided to do that. I left enough space here to where we can actually move this battery box back and put another identical one and go up to 400 amp hours of battery power if we want to. But I tell you what, man, we ran the induction cooktop, which is our biggest draw. We ran it for like an hour the other day at higher than half temperature and everything was fine. The inverter started beeping at me a little bit, but it kept running and it was no problem. And I have seen our power uh, capacity drop very little. We are very, uh, very sturdy on our voltage. And so I think for the time being, we're just going to stick with 200 amp hours. The thing that sucks about lithium is that it is quite expensive. Um, but in my mind, it's totally worth it. I mentioned these, uh, these fuses a little bit. We've got pretty much everything fused. There's a breaker in the inverter, and so it didn't need a fuse. But you know, we've got a fuse between the switch and the, this is a 250 amp fuse, uh, Blue Sea Systems fuse between the switch and the batteries. And then we've got, you know, the breaker here and fuses between the Orion and the bus bar, the Rover and the bus bar, and the Blue Sea Systems fuse bank and the bus bar. Right here, <laughs> this is the all important ground. Um, so basically what we did is we cut a hole in the floor and then drilled a hole all the way through the, the body of the van. Um, and I got down there, we put a bolt on one side and a lock washer and a nut on the other uh, to take this. This is a 2 aught uh, AWG um, that just basically comes off of the uh, negative bus bar and grounds everything to the van so that you don't have a bunch of uh, potential shocular uh, electricity running around. And then we put some flex paint on top of it to waterproof it. It's on the bottom too, like flex paint. So that's that.